This office coffee machine actually makes several different types of hot beverages. And if your employer prepays, you don't have to insert any coins. Production begins with a sheet of steel nearly two meters long by about half a meter wide. This flat, as it's called, will become the top and side sections of the machine's casing. A computer-guided punch press makes dozens of perforations for ventilation and for the various fittings the machine will need in order to function. A worker puts another sheet of steel into a press. This press bends the metal into 90 degree angles. This piece will become the bottom of the casing. A worker uses a spot welding machine to assemble what's called the base panel. This will later house a waste chute, overflow sensors and wires. Another worker coats the casing with an epoxy-based paint powder. This process statically charges the powder and draws it to the metal like a magnet. Excess powder falls into a barrel below. A worker installs a fan that'll vent the steam and heat generated inside the machine. Another worker assembles one of two coffee delivery mechanisms, called augers. When the machine's on, they move the ground coffee to the brewer. He installs the augers into what's called the dual hopper. The hopper's two sections will hold up to six pounds of different coffee blends, such as dark and light roasts. Next, he installs what's called an agitation wheel. This plastic wheel helps move the ground coffee along and prevents it from getting stuck. The worker then aligns plastic couplings on the augers to mate with the ingredient dispenser. The dual hopper attaches to the ingredient dispenser with one screw in a pivoting bracket. Workers also connect power wires to the dispenser's motor and to a water inlet valve. Next, they install a heater and temperature sensor inside the 7-liter plastic water tank. This 1100-watt heater keeps the water at 94 degrees Celsius, just below boiling. That's the optimal temperature for extracting flavor from ground coffee beans. After applying stickers warning service technicians to turn off the machine before draining it, a worker installs three outlet valves, one to dispense hot water for tea, one for coffee, and another for hot chocolate. Next come stainless steel rods to monitor the water level inside the tank. They trigger an automatic refill mechanism. The worker connects power wires to the brewer motor. Then she mounts what's called the whipper mixing bowl. This aligns with a chocolate syrup dispenser to prepare the hot chocolate. Next, she installs the brewer motor assembly into the machine's casing. This is the coffee machine's 15-button selection panel. It lets you select what type of hot drink to brew, in what cup size, and when to start. The panel also displays the prices when the coffee's not on the house. Once that's hooked up, workers test the chocolate syrup delivery system. They run water through it to ensure it doesn't leak. They also test to see if the system dispenses the correct dose of syrup. One dose is 15 milliliters, a tablespoon. A small cup of hot chocolate requires two doses. A large cup requires four. Now they install the brewer. It works much like a French press coffee maker, brewing a separate batch for each cup. To test it, they run water through it and make sure the selection panel works properly. By testing the panel with the coffee machine closed, they ensure the circuits are properly aligned behind the selection buttons. Depending on how strong you select your coffee, a dispenser releases between 6 and 16 grams of ground coffee into a reusable nylon filter. A piston then forces hot water through the filter for 10 to 20 seconds, depending on the size of cup. This process extracts the flavor of the ground beans. The machine then scrapes away the coffee grinds and throws them down the built-in waste chute. Then it prepares for the next customer and the next delicious cup.